All right, everybody, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us to the 10 Must Haves to Start a Podcast that actually converts. I've got this handsome gentleman who's with me here, uh, happens to be Mark. He's our uh, national sales manager, influence liberator, and a person who's overall just a magnificent human being. We're going to make sure that if you want to know more about who we are here at Proudmouth and would like to set an appointment uh, to have a demo and really find out what we do for our clients, that's why Mark is here and he will be interjecting intermittently. But let's go ahead and get rolling. So you're probably sitting there thinking to yourself, man, this guy is freaking handsome, but why in the hell should I listen to him? Well, here's why. First off, I literally wrote the book on social media. The social media handbook for financial advisors was a book about 11 years ago. I was the first person to write it for financial services specifically. And since then, um, I've had a lots of different iterations of my life from a practice management consultant uh, to now the co-founder with my business partner, Kirk Lowe of Proudmouth. Now, Proudmouth is an influence accelerator. And you say, well, how do you do that? Well, how we do that is through podcasting, video and social media. And that's who we are and what we do, which is why you're here today to learn more about podcasting. Now, just to also kind of put this a little bit into um, kind of context for you, we've done over 7,000 episodes for it advisors with zero compliance issues. You are who we work with. You are who we want to work with and you are who we work best with and who we built this entire company for. So these are the 10 things that we're going to go over today. Now, the first two, it's kind of philosophy. So I want you to pay attention, but when we get to number three, you really need to get a pen and paper handy uh, because guess what? I'm going to be flying through this stuff and I want to make sure that you all get all of the information that you need to be as successful as you possibly can with this presentation. All right. So setting the right success metrics, one of the biggest issues that most of you have is, is you think marketing is sales. Marketing is not sales. Marketing is a long-term plan that takes 18 to 24 months when you start a new marketing idea for it to truly be successful. You have to put the time in and realize that just like the greatest food out there, which is slow cooked food, the greatest marketing works the best when it is slow marketing. But our ultimate goal is for you to convert skeptics to fan over that time. And what that means is, is right now, many of you, when you're talking to prospects or talking to skeptics, they don't know who you are, what you do, and what makes you unique and different. When you have a great podcast, they become fans. They know who you are. They know what you do. They know why you do it. They know if they're the right client for you. And most importantly, they're going to tell other people about you. And a lot of you will think, okay, Matt, well, so I'm sold. I want to have a podcast. Now that was super easy. I'm three minutes in. But you unfortunately are going to be thinking, well, I need to get thousands of downloads to my podcast to be successful. And I'm telling you right now, those are vanity metrics. Do they make you feel good? Yeah, they really do. But the thing is, is you do not need to focus on those numbers for at least 18 to 24 months. You want to start building your momentum. And as you build the momentum, you're going to realize what success truly means. Now, I'm going to pause there and tell you that if you have any questions, please make sure that you put them into the Q&A. I will address those as they come in or at the end, depending. Uh, so if you have any questions, go ahead and put them into the Q&A. But what would be super cool is in the chat, uh, for those of you who are here, uh, go ahead and put in where you guys are, are, are from. Like I, we always, Mark and I always like to know, you know, where uh, you are in the world of advisor land. So go ahead and put in there where you're from uh, and we'll go ahead and shout a couple of you out in a minute, which really leads us to who are you talking to? You have to have a functional niche. You have to, I am sorry. And I'm not really, it's kind of apologizing just because that's what we do. Um, but you have to have a very, very specific focus. If you don't have a specific focus on who you are talking to, then you're not going to be able to get their attention especially when it comes to a podcast that converts. You can't podcast to everybody because if you try to podcast to everybody, then what ends up happening very simply is you are going to try to compete with people who have huge marketing budgets, the Ken Fishers, the Rick Edelmans, the Dave Ramseys, the Susie Ormans. You're never going to outspend those. You have to figure out what your niche is and make sure that when you're podcasting, you're thinking about them when you're creating the content and when you're recording the show so they feel like you're talking to them. All right. Now is when you're going to grab a piece of paper. 
right? Here we go, everybody. This is going to be hard and fast. I am going to help you right now today come up with your first year of podcast topics. So here we go. Episode one, number two, and number three, number one, number two, and number three are your origin stories. Every single superhero has an origin story. They're the best-selling comic books out of every comic book that there is. It is going to be your most listened to podcast. I guarantee it. Your first episode needs to be, who are you? Not just professionally, uh, I went to university of blankety blank and got my degree in blankety blank and I got my CFP. Yes, you have to talk about that. But they also want to know who you are. Why are you a financial advisor? Are you married? Are you in a relationship? Are you not in a relationship? Are you a dog mom? What? Who are you as a human? That's what people want to connect with. Then they are going to already assume, since you're a financial advisor, that you have all of the other stuff. Please remember to talk about the other stuff in your first episode, but that doesn't necessarily need to be your 100% focus. Your second one is, what is it like to work with me? And this is where you're going to tell stories. This is where you're going to give examples of the clients that you really, uh, that you love to work with. But, but again, this is your process. What is your financial planning process? Uh, what is your investment management process? What is your onboarding process? What is your meeting process? This is the opportunity for you to set very clear expectations on what it's like to work with you. And then episode number three is who do you focus on? And most importantly, why? <clears throat> why do you work with? uh, machinists. What, what is it about that, that niche of people that you were really drawn to? That's what your third episode is going to be. Now you're going to hear me use the word and you probably have, if you've been paying attention to what we do here at proud mouth, 27 minutes. Here's the deal. These don't have to be the full 27 minutes, but they do need to be north of 15 minutes. You want to make sure that you're consistently doing this and you want to make sure that you're giving them enough meat to sink their teeth into or vegetables if you're a vegetarian. But you want to make sure that you have lots of good stuff to sink your teeth into because this is where you're building the real emotional connection. Then episodes four, five and six, what you're going to do is you're going to categorize these in three ways. What do you always hear from clients? That's episode four. What do you always hear from prospects? That's episode five. Episode six is what do you hear from your referral partners and what questions do they always ask you? Now, you might be saying to yourself, gosh, Matt, that sounds wildly redundant. Yeah, it is redundant. And great marketing is redundant. You want to make sure that you're consistently saying the same things over and over again to drive your message home. But Episode number four, when you're sitting down with your client, what are you always answering? And you all know these answers already. What are you answering? Oh, well, Matt, you know what? I always seem to talk about Roth conversions. Great. Well, one of the things you're going to talk about in episode four is Roth conversions. Then episode number five is going to be when prospects come into my office, here are the top five things that prospects always ask us here at Halloran Wealth Management. That's what you're going to do in episode number five. And then episode number six is when I refer somebody or I get a referral from a referral party, CPA, it's a divorce attorney, estate planning or whatever. Here are the questions that we always hear from them. So it's episode four, five, and six. Seven, eight, nine. The free three phases of retirement, as an example, or the three major kind of milestones that people have in their life. Accumulation phase, pre-retirement phase, retirement phase. That's seven, eight, and nine. If you are in the accumulation phase, here are the 10 things that you need to know to be successful to make it when you get to the retirement phase, which is episode number eight, that you are going to truly be able to retire. And then what is life like after retirement? Uh, we, Mark and I were just at a, 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 a conference the last couple of days in Detroit. And there's a guy who's got a podcast that's called Every Day is Saturday, and it's all about life after retirement, because every day when you're in retirement is Saturday, right? Think about that. That's the sort of way that you're going to be able to create really meaningful and powerful content so that you can truly resonate <clears throat> with your ideal audience. All right. Episodes 10, 11, and 12. This is where you're going to change things up pretty substantially because all the way up to episode number 10, you're doing most of the talking. You're going to generally, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully be interviewed by somebody um, so that it's more than one voice. Solo casting we have found doesn't work very well unless you're a professional performer and already famous. 
But episodes 10, 11, and 12 are where you're going to have a lot of fun with those centers of influence. So on your piece of paper right now, I want you to write down the names of five to 10 centers of influence that you love that you think would agree to be on your podcast. And then what you're going to do is you're going to ask them the questions you know you need to ask them to highlight how smart they are and why they are your referral partner, right? So pick three estate planning attorneys, pick three CPAs, three uh, yacht dealers, car dealer owners. Um, uh, let's say uh, you uh, have a great relationship with an HR director at a local company. Those are the people that you want to get on your podcast and you're going to have what we refer to as is or center of influence focused podcast. And when they come on your show, you have to get them to agree that they're going to share that show because it's a 30 minute commercial about how awesome they are to their whole network. This is where you start getting compounding centers of influence, right? So you have an estate planning attorney, they share it with their whole audience. Now you just gained your podcast's notoriety to their whole audience. It works very, very well. And I'm just full disclosure, it's how we grew our entire multi-million dollar business here at Proudmouth by doing this structure specifically. All right, some more logistic-y things that you need to make sure so that you don't fall down and go boom. If you come up with the name of the show, you need to make sure it's okay. Uh, Cause if not, you can end up getting a cease and desist order, which has unfortunately happened uh, to uh, people that we know. First step you're going to do is you're going to try to come up with the name. Now, here's the fun part. You can use chat GPT or you can use Google. Uh, you can hire people to do this to help you come up with creative names. It shouldn't just be the name of your financial services firm, but it can be your tagline, which I'm actually going to show you here in a few minutes and a couple of slides a little bit later on how you can use your tagline as the name of your podcast or your copyrighted um, subtitle of your entire financial services practice. Then after you do that, Google it. Then you need to go to Spotify or Apple Podcasts, Google it there or search it there. And then you have to do this extra thing. Now, this is worth a lot of money because you guys can get in a little bit of trouble on the back end if you don't do this last thing. You need to go to USPTO.gov and you need to do a simple search with quotation marks around the name of your podcast and see if anybody has marked that trademarked or copywritten that phrase for education. I can't stress this enough. This is the most important thing that you're going to have is making sure that you're doing it that way. All right. We're going to also talk about the perfect podcasting formula. So many, many, many years ago, regardless of how old you think the earth is, we were hanging around campfires and telling stories, right? You have to include storytelling in all of your podcasts. So we have something called the perfect podcasting formula, storytelling, education, entertainment, call to action. Storytelling is one of the biggest things that you all seem to forget in your podcast. So Mark and I are podcasting and Mark says to me, Matt, tell me a story about, you know, what uh, that, that one client, Jane, who's not her real name, you know, does in retirement. When I tell that story, my listeners are then going to see themselves in the story, which means that they already feel like a client. And when they feel like a client, that's when the magic happens. And the other thing that a lot of you fall down on is you don't tell somebody what to do. If you haven't read the book, Seven Principles of Influence by Dr. Robert Cialdini, I highly recommend that you put that on your weekend reading list, put it on as an audiobook or whatever you consume your thought leadership. And the reason why I bring up Dr. Robert Cialdini is, well, actually very, very simple. Because he talks about the principle of reciprocity. When you do something nice for somebody, they are socially obligated to do something nice for you. If you are continuously educating your population, your niche, your ideal client, it is okay to ask them to do something for you. Set an appointment, download your white paper, you know, whatever you really need to do, that's how you're going to use call to action, this perfect podcasting formula to truly help you grow your practice. All right, next up, we've got, your show description and cover art. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, Matt, goodness gracious, I'm not a graphic designer. How in God's name am I gonna be able to do this? Well, I'll give you a couple of quick hints. 
The first thing that you're going to do uh, is with the description of the show, which so you got the cover art, which I'm going to show you examples of in just a minute. But you have to have a very specific description of your show that is going to be on your podcast channel. This description of your show needs to be super specific on who you want to listen. And one of the best ways to do that is to either Google or use AI to help you write your show description. In ChatGPT, you can say, write me a podcast show description that focuses on the needs of machinists in the greater Cincinnati area and their biggest concerns about retirement. Hit enter. It's going to spit out something super fast. And then what you're going to do is you're going to humanize it because you can't just cut and paste chat GPT stuff because you're going to see that there's going to be some issues, but you have to infuse your show description with the keywords that are needed so that when people go to podcast players, they're going to find your show. Now, the other thing that you have to have, so that's the, the, the literary or the written aspect of your podcast. Now you need to look at what it looks like to have great cover art. I love this cover art for so many reasons. Uh, this is something that we built for Josh Leonard at Leonard Advisory Services or Advisory Group. I love this idea that he talks about relax, it's retirement, right? So isn't that what all of you really want people to do is look, it's retirement. It's okay. I got you covered. And if you look at the picture, you look at the color scheme, this is all part of their brand standards at, at Leonard advisory group. It makes you feel like, you know, Josh, he's very warm. He's not staring right at you, but he's got a really nice smile on his face. And the best part about it is Josh, before he ever, um, went ahead and launched his show. He crowdsourced this with his social media and had people buying into the show before, before he ever released that episode. And it was brilliant. Uh, so brilliant that we actually talked to all of our clients about doing that now. Now, the next one is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how important it is to have a specific niche focused podcast and how specific you can get and still get lots of listeners. So this is Tim Volk Consulting Company's podcast. It's the Rainbow Bowl podcast. Now, Tim Volk is a specific consultant that works with ultra high net worth families and financial advisors. And maybe this is somebody that you need to be listening to on working with LGBTQ plus issues within families of wealth. Now, you might think, holy crap, Matt, that's really specific. And you know what? It is really specific. But here's the best part. That's what you need to do with a podcast. Because if you're listening to the Rainbow Bull podcast, you're one of two people. You're either a person who's LGBTQ+, who is having issues with their family when it comes to multi-generational wealth transfer, or you're a financial services professional who's working with a family who's having the same issues. That's what we want you to focus on. And this is how you have to have a podcast that actually converts. It can't be a plain Jane podcast, everybody. It has to be hyper-focused and specific. Now, this is the example that I, I wanted to bring up about how to use your tagline for a company, your company, which Michelle Gessner, Retire to a Life You Love, is what she's already trademarked. So if you have already marked something and it's as catchy as this, use that. Now, this is fantastic. Again, color scheme, fonts, everything is right within the brand standards of Michelle Gessner's company, Gessner Wealth Strategies. It's got a wonderful picture of Michelle. She's got a nice smile on her face. She looks very approachable. She looks very professional. Um, and she also just looks very nice. And when you listen to her show, which you can look up right now, Retired to a Life You Love podcast, you're going to feel that from Michelle. She's a wonderfully warm person who's wicked knowledgeable. And she talks about her and you get the essence of the Michelle-ness. And that's what we want you to be able to do if you're going to have a podcast that actually converts. Number seven is mindset. Now, there's two components of this that are really important. Now, if you don't know who this magnificent person is on my screen right now, this is Candace Parker. She actually happens to be one of the greatest basketball players of our time, hands down. Accuracy, performance, leadership, all of that is she's the best of the best. But here's the fun part about it is she is a professional basketball player. She also does a lot of color commentary now. But every time she gets on the court, she warms up. She practices. She prepares. She shows up to practice. 
When is the last time you as an advisor practiced a client meeting, a financial plan, a prospect meeting, a difficult conversation? You are a professional and I'm challenging you to make sure that your mindset is right when it comes to this. When you're going to do a show, it's a show and you have to show up ready to perform much like a professional basketball player. And the second thing about mindset that I really want you to focus on is this. Candace has many, many people that she pays money to, to keep her in peak performance so that when she is on the court, she's putting on a great show. She pays an image consultant. She pays a PR consultant. She probably pays personal trainers. She's got so much money going out so that she can stay in her lane to be the greatness that she is. And we do the same thing for our clients. So if you're going to go ahead and you want real support to make sure that you're going to have a podcast that actually converts, we charge $2,500 a month for our services. Now that includes not just the podcast, but it also includes social media. It includes video. And if you want to know more about that, Mark's going to talk to you a little bit more about that at the end of the webinar today. Then if you're going to do this yourself, you need to learn how to do post-production. Now, post-production isn't necessarily something that's wildly difficult. It's just time consuming. Now, we recommend that you use a, pro pro a program called Audacity. It's the simplest, most user-friendly one that works across every single solitary computer system, whether you're a schmuck and use PCs like Mark, or if you're an Apple guy like me. <laughs> Sorry, Mark, I just had a ping you there. Um, you know, if you're an Apple guy like me, uh, it works on any of the computer systems. In fact, it even works on some of the other Linux. It works on all of those. Uh, but yes, you have to learn how to produce it. And here's why. Because you can have the greatest ideas in the world, but if your audio sucks, nobody's going to listen. So there's one tip that I want to make sure that you're consistently doing, which is called normalization. If you have your intro and outro and they're too loud, and then when you come in, it's too quiet, it's very, very frustrating to people. Because then what's going to happen is they're going to turn up your audio. And then when the outro comes on, they're going to get their ears blasted. You can actually highlight the entire audio file or the audio thing on your screen, and you need to run it through normalization. What normalization does is it takes the highs and the lows and brings them closer to middle so that it's actually going to sound a lot better and more pleasing on the ears. Next, you have to syndicate, which means that you have to go through a third party in order to get your podcast out into the world. Now, with the exception of Spotify, who ended up making it so that you can upload your podcast directly to Spotify now, you don't want to do that because you want to be able to go through a third party. And the third party is going to put you on everywhere compliance will allow you to go iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Pandora, iHeartRadio. If you use the company like we use, which is Blueberry, you're going to have the opportunity then to syndicate your podcast to every major player so that more people can listen to it. And no matter what they're listening, whether it's an iPhone or a Samsung or a whatever, 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 Google phone, that they're going to be able to listen to their podcast, even on the computer. You also need to syndicate to YouTube because YouTube is the second largest podcast player in the world. And that's a whole nother tangent, but I just want to make sure you knew that it's a little bit more difficult than just going through a syndication platform. And then last but not least, what you really need to focus on is you have to worry about you. You've heard me say this through the last 22 minutes uh, that I want you to be able to have people understand who you are as a human being. What does that mean? Well, you have to be your own loud. You have to rise above the noise. You have to make it so that you have the opportunity to get your personality out into the world. And how do you do that? Well, the first thing you have to do is give yourself permission to unapologetically be yourself. You have to be yourself. That's who's buying you anyway. Dale, Mick, you guys, they buy you. They don't buy your investment management process. They will it after they feel like they know who you are. So that is the last key component that you need to pay attention to, to make it so that you have the opportunity to truly connect. And then people come in pre-sold. This happens to us all the time. Mark, you know what? I'm going I'm to put you on the spot here. Uh, would you mind telling the FPA story about the first conference you and I went to together? Yeah. Sure. Um, so real quick, I was just started with with Proud Mouth. I wasn't even really sure what we did, to be quite honest. Um, you know, full disclosure. And uh, we go to this conference and uh, there's Matt. And I, I just started to get to know Matt and, and, and the team. We have this great booth and this guy comes in 
high five, flying high five, fist bumps, hugs. Uh, they're laughing. They're chatting. Ten minutes goes by. My mouth is on the ground. Probably he leaves. I said, Matt, was that like an old army buddy or maybe a high school buddy? He goes, Mark, I've never met that person in my life. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, I don't even know their name. I'm like, wow. So that that's what we do, and, and that that's exactly it. Like it's because this gentleman had heard and been following Matt and listening to our podcast for so many years. He thought that he knew Matt, knew he, obviously he knew his story, knew what he was about, even knew his uh, sense of humor, really. Uh, so it was a really great connection. Like it was pretty, pretty interesting to witness. That's what we want all of you to do is to make it so that people can feel you when it is convenient for them. Instead of them having to come to a webinar or a seminar or a conference call or whatever at a specific point in time, podcasting gives you the opportunity to do that at scale when it's convenient for your ideal peeps. Now, if anybody has any questions, you can put them into q and I'm going to answer a couple of questions that have happened on our previous webinars, which the, the big one that we hear a lot is how do I find an unexplored? Or niche. Now, here's the deal. Niches are the easiest thing in the world to find. And the way that you do that is you look within your existing book of business. What you're going to do is you're going to take your top five clients and you're going to start writing down all of the things that you know about them and that you like about them. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start seeing the commonalities. That's how you're going to find who exactly you want to work with and why you want to work with them. That's the best way to go ahead and explore uh, an unexplored niche or really be able to find your own. The other question that we get a lot are, how do I get feedback about my show and how do I really increase my overall engagement with my podcast? And the best way for you to do that is, well... The simplest way for you to do that is by you talking to your clients about your podcast. So when you're sitting in a client meeting and your client says something like, uh, you know, man, I need to know more about 529 plans. Okay. Well, Mrs. Johnson, I don't know if you know this, but we have a podcast. I just did one three podcasts ago on 529 plans. I'm more than happy to educate you on it today, but we have this podcast so that when you do have these questions, you can go ahead and do that. And then what happens is you start saying that for, I don't know, six to nine months in your client meetings that next year, what's going to happen is your clients are going to come in and they're going to be like, Oh my God, I listened to your podcast about this. And I love this. And Hey, can we do this strategy? That's where everything starts working, but you have to be proud of your show. We are called Proud Mouth for a reason. You have to rise above the noise, be your own loud, and be proud of the content that you create. And part of being proud is being unapologetic about talking about it. The more you do that, the better off you're going to be, the more engagement you're going to get, and the best feedback you're going to have. Now, the last question that I get all the time is how often should I publish a podcast? I don't know who in God's name told all of you that you need to do a weekly podcast. That is not correct. Please, dear God, don't start there. You're going to fail miserably. We recommend two podcasts a month is the run rate. The pricing that I gave for you previously earlier in this was for two podcasts a month. So that's $2,500 for two podcasts a month. Um, we can do, You can do one podcast a month, but please don't try to do a weekly podcast. You have a real job. Stick with your real job and outsource the rest to a marketing professional like us. All right, so philosophically, I want you to understand that influence is the only marketing left that works. Now, I'm not talking about being a TikTok dancer or the next Instagram model. I'm saying that you have to become more influential to your ideal clients. And the way that you do that is because you are in the expertise economy. You have to show your expertise at scale to make it so more and more people can consume your content, build a relationship with you when it's convenient for them, not when it's convenient for you. And when you do that, 18 to 24 months after you begin this process, you're gonna start seeing real results. We have a wonderful free resource for you here. If you scan this QR code, uh, this is going to give you the opportunity to go to podrocketacademy.com. You go to podrocketacademy.com, which we also have a link in the chat. What happens is you get access. You can do a free trial at podrocketacademy.com and you can get access to podcasting 101 on how you can start your own podcast. We've got some other great things, some branding stuff in there, some SEO stuff, some website stuff in there. So go to podrocketacademy.com. But if you are still with us here and you think to yourself, well, dear God, God, I can't do this myself. Mark, why don't you tell them a little bit about how they can get in contact with you so that if they want to find out more about Proudmouth, they can. Great. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. So uh, I think Christine is on the line here. She's there. There. Look at that, Christine. It's like, uh, it's a magic. 
Uh, so there, there is a, um, a link to my calendar that uh, I'd be happy to meet with, with you. Really, it's, to, it's a get to know you, right? I mean, this is a short webinar, um, you know, going over a few things, but I can kind of bring you through the journey and what it would look like to start working with us, the services that we offer. And, uh, you know, I, I really, it's the value that we bring. I mean, the services are services, but it's the value uh, that we bring uh, to you and or your team. Uh, how we can become, quite frankly, your content marketing partner is really what we're striving for. And, and how do we create that great content and how do we uh, turn skeptics, your skeptics into your fans? That, that's really what we do for a living. And that's all we do. So uh, if you want to know a bit more about how we do that and, and the process and, and getting to know us, just uh, go ahead, click the link and, and find some time on uh, my calendar. And I can't wait to meet you. And I want to thank all of you guys for spending some time with us today. We really appreciate you. If you do have any questions, please make sure you use that, that link uh, to chat with Mark specifically. Uh, if you have not followed us on LinkedIn, make sure you do follow either Proudmouth or me or Mark on LinkedIn. We're always putting out great content to help you uh, become the best marketer that you can be. We know that you can do this yourself, but you need to ask yourself the question, should I? It's that whole Dan Sullivan strategic coach, who, not how. Do you really need to know how to do it or you need to find the who who can do it for you? We want to be your who, whether it's in the Pod Rocket Academy to help you learn how to do it or through Mark and us here at Proudmouth to help you execute a podcast that actually converts. So for Mark and everybody here at Proudmouth, this is Matt Hallern, and we'll see you on the other side of the webinar very soon.